Thank you, Misha. It's a very big day here at CBS3. I'm in our great hall where we've just kicked off our Ronald McDonald House Charities Telethon. We've got folks here waiting for the phones to ring. The number is on your screen. It's 1 844 977 CBS3. Tina is waiting for this phone to ring. Make a donation now and help change the life of a child. You may not realize this, but the first Ronald McDonald House in the world was here in Philadelphia. It all started off. Indeed, indeed. And it all started due to the Eagles and a little girl with leukemia. It all began in 1969. Eagles tight end Fred Hill's daughter Kim had been battling leukemia. Fortunately, her treatment was successful. And when Hill returned to work, he approached his co workers about raising money to fight the disease. They called their effort Eagles Fly for Leukemia. Eagles owner Leonard Toast pledged a million dollars, certain that general manager Jimmy Murray could raise the money. Dr. Audrey Evans accepted the first check. When I walked in, I said, Dr. Dr. Evans, Jim Murray, Philadelphia Eagles. She said, what are they? I said, well, we're the football team. I said, we're on television. I don't have a television. Then I said, well, we have some cash. Years later, Dr. Evans recounted the conversation in their first meeting. It started when we were in the old children's hospital, which was crowded and cramped, and there was nowhere for parents to stay, so they slept by the bed or somewhere in the hall. And I thought we needed somewhere um, where they could stay together. Um, and actually, that's what came about. At the time, McDonald's was about to introduce green shakes for St. Patrick's Day. Murray suggested an Eagles promotion to raise cash. I said, how can I get a quarter from each milkshake? That's all I wanted was a quarter. Franchise owners in Philly had an even better idea. Name the house for their clown mascot, and McDonald's would give him every cent. The Shamrock Shake was a hit, and on October 15, 1974, the first Ronald McDonald House was dedicated on Spruce Street. By 1981, they'd outgrown the house and moved into a 100-year-old Victorian-era mansion on Chestnut Street. It was somebody's home at one time. John Newman has been volunteering here for 22 years. We had 19 rooms in here, and we had the living room was over here, and we had a kitchen down in the back. People who originally owned the house, they had their child's face carved into that. Wow, that's this? That. Yep. And who would know that this meant so much to so many people with children? That's right. Yep. Decades and decades yep. later. By 1995, even the mansion was getting cramped. Our Pat Shiraki reported on a $4 million expansion project. Right now, capacity is 19 families, but that barely scratches the surface of the need that exists. The $4 million expansion project will add 24 new rooms. Now, decades later, what started as a boost from the Eagles has grown steadily. After all, it's a Philly story. It's the best of Philly. Say that.